Hey guys, Barrett here with Spec of Tech. Welcome to the channel. Today we have an awesome video for you guys. We're gonna be comparing the budget tone winner D6000 15 inch subwoofer to the SVS PB3000 subwoofer. I recently did a review of the tone winner D6000 subwoofer and I really was impressed with its performance, especially when considering its price. If you'd like to check out the review after this video, I'll link it in the top right hand corner here. Now to avoid getting the usual comments down below about how this isn't apples to apples, let's cover why we're comparing these subwoofers. First of all, I do understand that the PB3000 is a 13 inch subwoofer and the D6000 6000 is a 15 inch subwoofer but the reason we're comparing them is because the pb3000 is actually more expensive than the tone winner d6000 and i feel that the performance with the d6000 is going to impress you over the pb3000 so that's why we are comparing these subwoofers now really quickly before we compare the room eq wizard measurements that i took in my room let's have a look at what is similar of these subwoofers and what is different so first things first let's have a look at the price of these units the tone winner d6000 is currently priced at 12.99 us dollars or 17.99 canadian dollars the svs the SPB3000 is currently priced at $1599 US dollars or $2700 Canadian dollars. So as you can see that there is a significant price difference in US dollars, but the price is even more significant when you translate it to Canadian dollars. And that's because SVS recently increased their prices in Canada by 20%, but they did not increase the prices in US. Now, as I already stated, the D6000 is a 15 inch driver and the PB3000 is a 13 inch driver. And there are some differences in their cabinet sizes as you see here. Now, both of them are a ported subwoofer. Both of these subwoofers are putting out 800 watts RMS, but the PB3000 is putting out 2,500 plus watts of peak power and the D6000 is putting out 3,000 plus watts of peak power. Both of these subwoofers do have Bluetooth connectivity that connects to their proprietary apps. Both of these apps are available on iOS or Android for the Tone Winner and for the SVS. The functionalities of the apps are very similar as well, so there's not much to mention there. The only other thing that I would like to point out is that the SVS PB3000 only has RCA inputs and the D6000 has RCA inputs as well as an XLR input. As I already mentioned, both of these subwoofers are ported, but they are able to be put into a sealed mode by plugging the ports with foam and then placing the DSP into sealed mode. Now I will be comparing the RU measurements for the sealed mode as well. I think for the most part that that covers the similarities and the differences of these subwoofers. Of course, there may be some smaller differences that I didn't mention, but we just wanted to cover the main differences of the subwoofers in this video. For the measurements that I'm about to show you, both of the subwoofers were placed in the front right-hand corner of my room, and the calibrated microphone was placed at my main listening position for the measurements. And both of the subwoofers were placed in their normal mode. I did also take measurements in sealed mode, which I'll show you as well. So let's hop over to my computer and have a look at the room measurements. All right, guys, so here we are on my computer. So we're gonna have a look at the uh, D6000 versus the PB3000. All right, so starting with the uh, D6000, in just normal mode. Um, so here we are with normal mode and volume 65, volume 68, volume 71, volume 74. So as you can see at volume 74, we are starting to get some compression, which I probably labeled here. Uh, yep, more compression. So we'll remove that one. Um, with the orange line, I mean, we do get some slight compression here at 11 hertz and down, but I don't think we're going to be that picky to to remove this line simply because it's compressing at such a low frequency. So I think we'll hold on to this orange line as our compression or max line for the D6000. And again, this is in normal mode. So here we are with the PB3000 in the front right horn corner. Now uh, pay attention that the, the volume numbers are different here, but we don't really care about that. I was using a different processor, uh, but this is just the raw output of the subwoofer itself. Um, and the volume was different because of the, the processor, or the volume numbers are different. So here we are at 30 dB and 27 dB. And I think at 27 dB, uh, let's have a look here what I what I noted. Uh, so no, no compression there. It doesn't look like 24 dB. Okay, so 24 dB, we are definitely compressing at a higher frequency here, starting at about 15 hertz, which I probably did label in here. Yeah. Uh, hitting some compression. All right, so we'll uh, we'll remove this blue line because we're definitely hitting some heavier compression there. And we'll keep the green line as our max for the PB3000. All right, so here we are with the response in my room between these two subwoofers. The orange line being the D6000 in normal mode and the green line being the PB3000. As you can see, the D6000 is outperforming the PB3000 significantly. Uh, we have almost, I would say almost usable output really down to about 10 hertz, but even if you wanted to say right here before it drops off a little lower, or maybe right here, 
11 and 11 or 11 and a half hertz we're still at 96 db whereas with the pb3000 we're at 76 like this isn't really usable output it pretty much falls off a cliff right here which is 16 and a half hertz i guess you could technically say you have usable output down to 15 hertz but it's really just falling off a cliff here whereas the d6000 has a much slower roll off that gives you much more output down here in the lower regions the, the only spot that the PB3000 has slightly more output is here at 18.24 hertz. It has uh, about 1 dB more than the D6000, and that's obviously just due to the DSP, the way they're DSP'd. But like up here, there's just no question that it's outperforming by a significant margin. At 62 hertz, you're at 106.4 dB on the D6000 and 90 dB. 90.6 dB on the PB3000. So you're looking at 16 dB difference. Here at 32 hertz, you're at 114 versus 103, 11 dB. Like this is significant output, guys, that you are going to 100% notice a difference of. Uh, even at 20 hertz, you are 104, basically 105 dB on the D6000 and on the basically 101 on the PB3000. So again, you're getting a 4 dB increase, which is noticeable. It takes either double the power or double the cone area to gain 3 dB. And here you're gaining 4 dB at 20 Hertz. So no matter how you look at it, the D6000 is gonna feel like a more significant subwoofer in your room. Now, obviously your response is gonna look different in your room. This is specific to my room. Let me do point that out before I get the comments down below. The fact of the matter is though, I'm comparing these subwoofers that were both taken, their measurements were both taken in the exact same spot in the same room with the same computer, with the same calibrated microphone, the same program. So this is this is exactly apples to apples with subwoofers in the exact same place in my room. So as you can see, you, you get a you get a null here, you get a null here. Now the subwoofer DSP is obviously going to be a little bit different, but these nulls almost perfectly cor correspond, as well as this peak here, which is a room mode of mine around 32 hertz. Both of them correspond, so you can tell that the subwoofers were placed in the exact same spot in my room. And the D6000 just absolutely knocks it out of the park versus the PB3000. Now again, I'm not trying to knock the PB3000 here, guys. I'm just stating facts when it comes to performance the D6000 is outperforming the PB3000 by a significant margin, as you can see. Absolutely stellar results from the, the Tone Winner D6000. You cannot take that away from them. Say what you want, uh, but you can't take the fact that it is outperforming the PB3000 away from them. So the next thing I wanted to show you guys <clears throat> is sealed mode versus sealed mode. So let's open up uh, the measurements here. So here I have the D6000 and the PB3000 in sealed mode. So this is the D6000, so volume 65, volume 68, volume 71. Uh, still no compression here really happening. Volume 74. Oh yeah, right here. Okay, so we're hitting compression. So we won't use this orange line. We'll use this blue line as our maximum because there was no compression there. And then for the PB3000, 27. All right, so we're still not hitting compression on this blue line. So here we are at volume 24. Uh, and that should have been a 3 dB increase, and we're definitely not getting a 3 dB increase here. So we are hitting some compression, which I probably noted. Yes, I did. So at 24, we're hitting compression, so we can't use this line. We'll use the blue line. So here we are with the D6000 blue line. Um, pretty flat response. Uh, as you can see, it does roll off a little bit stronger on the low end, and you still have a very strong uh, upper range here. But the d 6000s beating the PB3000, even in sealed mode, down to 11 hertz. So, which you can't really hear anyway, but, I mean, there's there's a little bit of a difference here at 10 hertz. You got uh, 92.8 on the PB3000 versus, oh, that's not quite on the line, about 90 dB on the D6000. But from 11 or almost 12 hertz and up, the D6000 has, again, significantly more output. Like, this is very, very noticeable output. So at 20 hertz, almost 102 dB, basically 102 dB, versus 93 dB. So a 9 dB difference at 20 hertz is absolutely going to be noticeable. Um, at 15 hertz, we're at 97.5. 
versus 92.5. So a 5 dB difference at 15 hertz. Again, that's significant. Why? Because it takes either double the cone area or double the power to get a 3 dB increase. And we got more than a 3 dB increase here. And then at 32 hertz, we're 113 dB, 113.1 versus 101. So a 12 dB difference, guys. This is going to be very, very noticeable. Uh, at 60 hertz, we have basically 102, 101.2, or 101.8, sorry. And at 60 hertz, we have 90. So 11 dB difference. All of this is going to be absolutely incredibly noticeable. So if you put these two subwoofers in your room, you will notice a difference. No question, you will hear a difference. So again, the the Tone Winner D6000, there's no question this thing is killing it when it comes to performance. Absolutely mind-blowing that they can provide this type of performance at its price point, considering the difference of price between the PB3000 and the D6000. Absolutely incredible, guys. I really am blown away. So when I was when I released the video on the D6000, and I was really excited about the, per the performance. This is why. Because I knew this already. I had already looked at the numbers. I would looked at the graphs. Because I had these measurements in my room with these subwoofers. And I just absolutely couldn't believe what I was seeing when when I took a look at the price and I took a look at the performance of the two. It's it's mind blowing. It really is just mind blowing, guys. That's why I was excited. That's why there was just there was so much excitement in my voice when I was talking about the D six thousand. A lot of you cross it off as oh it's just hype. It's just hype, or I'm just trying to hype up the product. That has nothing to do with it. I am here to show you guys what performs better, and if you can get this performance at at less cost. Why wouldn't I be excited about that? I'm a home theater and audio enthusiast. So when I see something like this, of course, I'm going to get excited. Regardless um, of what the product is or what the brand is, I try not to be a fanboy of any brand. I just try to provide you guys information that, that matters in the audio community. And to me, this matters. This is, this is stellar competition to other brands that are going to have to look at themselves and say, hey, wait a second, we got this other brand out here knocking it out of the park with the performance for less cost let's try and compete at least i hope that's what's going to happen because that's good for the consumer so anybody that's unhappy about this like i'm not trying to slam svs i'm not trying to slam other brands i like what they've done uh, they have excellent customer service they've done amazing things for for audio in general they've done great things for the community i'm not slamming svs here guys i like the brand i i don't want to say anything negative but I do want to point out that this tone winner is absolutely killing it. Plain and simple. That's what I'm trying to point out here. Uh, I will be doing another comparison of the D6000 versus the Paradigm X15 because I do have room measurements of the same in the same location as well. And I think you're going to be just as shocked to see that one. Anyway, I hope that these measurements have been helpful for you. Let's move on. So as you can see, guys, the performance of the Tone Winner D6000 is absolutely impressive at its price point. As a matter of fact, it's absolutely impressive regardless of its price point. I think that the measurements pretty much did speak for themselves here. But if you are debating between these two subwoofers, I would recommend the Tone Winner D6000 simply because the fact that it's giving you a lot more performance for a less expensive price. But with that being said, I have dropped links for both of these subwoofers down in the description below if you'd like to check either of them out. Make sure that you guys are staying tuned on the channel as well because I will be comparing the Tone Winner or D6000 to the Paradigm X15 subwoofer and I think that you're going to be equally as impressed with that comparison so if you haven't subscribed make sure that you do and then tick the bell icon so you'll be notified of those videos dropping and please take just one short second to hit that like button I always do appreciate it I would also truly appreciate if you'd consider supporting the channel I've dropped my Patreon link down in the description below you can also hit the thanks or the join button right below this video remember to enjoy your systems I'll see you on the next one cheers